Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome back to the show Professor Adam Pouts. Adam, welcome to the show. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, um, fantastic, man. Awesome good. to have you back. I'm just going to ask you to okay, move so. a little closer to the microphone if you want. Should um, I do my deep Barry White voice? Um, please do what, whatever. I think make you Gatsby died up in, up in the room. Do the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome, man. Adam, thank you very much. You know, um, there's a lot happening in hip hop these days. Yeah. You've uh, sort of observed, you've played an active role, you know, in terms of uh, your contribution, not just to hip hop, but just to, I would say, society, culture in general on so many different levels. Just to, to, to recap for the listeners that don't know Professor Adam Hart and your contributions, do you just want to? give us a very short but brief history of you know the work you've done started in 93 when i was minding my own business watching tv the theater top 20 as it was called back in uh you know uh lawrence Dube, neil johnson uh, presenting the show and then cutting to a video by a crew called prophet of the city a song called understand where i'm coming from and almost automatically i jumped up and were like i was i was, I was convinced the song was going to get banned the entire album would get banned i ran after every music store to find this album and it did get banned, I was right. And that became a, a, a master's level research project for me, a dissertation. And um, before you knew it, I was throwing the attention at Bushy Radio. You guys, I interviewed you a few months after you got banned. You were angry, you were hurt, you were upset. I'm like, this is awful, but it's also great material. Mm. And there's a lot going on. Hip hop isn't just about a bunch of guys trying to sign American. There's a lot going on politically and culturally. There's a lot of affirmation, a lot of use of local languages and dialects that, that makes for really, really interesting research and actually convinces the academy, I think, um, that there's more to uh, Cape Flats culture and, and black South African youth culture than, than meets the eye. We shouldn't be studying Shakespeare and you know, James Joyce exclusively at universities. We should be looking at Cape Town and what's going on in the flats and in various townships all around the country. Your, um, your feelings, observations about hip-hop, I mean, you've been in touch and connected and once again, you know, going back to so many years and I know that you've been following the journey of so many um, different artists and musicians just across the board as well, you know. So, I mean, your, your, your feeling about um, the climate in South Africa for, for hip-hop especially? It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's bigger than me. Big, uh, hip-hop is bigger than me. <laughs> Get it. Um, yeah, there's so much going on, it's hard to keep track. Um, I wish I could clone myself to keep <laughs> up with, with what's going on. Uh, here's the cool thing about hip-hop in South Africa and the rest of the continent, the rest of Africa. Hip-hop activism, a particular kind of conscious hip-hop, the sort of energy uh, culturally and politically of hip-hop outside of the country, and specifically on this continent, is actually stronger than in the States. A lot of hip-hop in the States, a lot of the mainstream stuff that you see is played out, it's all that, it's, it's really you know, simplistic politically, pretty misogynist, oftentimes racist, blackface minstrelsy, all of the stuff you see in mainstream hip hop. You don't have that happening outside of outside of the States. You've got a different kind of hip hop yeah. taking off. And that's exciting. I was just I mean sort of like one of the main questions that I wanted to touch on, you know, with regards to um let's say academia and, and, and hip hop. I mean, do you do you still feel, you know, that um do you feel there's a link or is it something that sort of needs to be encouraged in a, in a certain sense as well? Because we know there's a lot of things that sort of happen, if you want to call it, um, uh, sort of through hip-hop's undercurrency. We have a lot of young people coming up, they just go with the vibe, you know. <clears throat> it was the same in our case as well. You know, we just got into it because we wanted to vibe. I didn't know, you know, I'm going to be this guy that's going to be talking about Steve Biko, Mandela, and whoever else is out there. You know, I never planned it that way. It's kind of like the stream took me down that direction and now we have people such as yourself, we got um, you know so many other people out there that kind of decided to take the academic route but in terms of that filtering down let's say to the to the now generation, do you feel it's important for them to at least explore um, that uh, uh, that path? Absolutely, look I mean if you look at MTV and a whole lot of other mainstream, you know, BET, a whole lot of mainstream mass media, the kind of hip-hop that people might believe, the only kind of hip-hop that people might believe exists is the kind of negative you know, uh, stereotyping of, of black men, um, objectifying of women, uh, confirming racist and sexist stereotypes. That's one kind of hip hop. It got co-opted. Mainstream gangster rap and R&B, and that's fine. If people want to do that, they love it, it's cool. Some people just bounce to the beat, they don't care about their legs. But the work of scholars and activists out there is to draw attention to the fact that there are other kinds of hip hop besides that mainstream mm -hmm. stuff that you see on TV. 
And your cipher session just a few minutes ago proves that, that people are rapping about diverse kinds of things. Uh, I like this cat over here. He's, he's, he's rapping about his religious conviction and how he draws strength from that. And yeah. It's a positive thing. There are so many cats out there, and they don't want to be on MTV necessarily. Yeah, that's right. uh, there probably is no, no place for that kind of positivity. And scholars and activists then have to create alternate spaces for, for, for aspiring new pop heads to explore those other kinds of things and to actually find a voice, you know? Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Good Up FM. We are Summer Connecting Cape Town. We're chatting to Professor Adam Hauk and we're kind of connecting the dots and, uh, you know, kind of forming the links and also to get a better perspective, you know, when it comes to uh, hip-hop and academia. We... You wanted to say something before we go to the break? Or Speak, yeah. Do you want to Quickly, talk? quickly. UCT Summer School, there's going to be, there is exactly such a space for people to explore the alternative ways that hip-hop exists in the world. Comes to UCT Summer School at UCT. I'll tell you what, let, 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 me, let me play the balls and, and then the tell me a little bit more about that after, after the break because that's also the thing, you know, sure. how do we, I, I want to kind of get to the point as to how we can encourage these kids, you know, or young folk or the curious minds to actually take the step and go there, become motivated, motivate yourself for something to go to such, you know, initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, hip hop, non stop. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be inspired, you got to stay wired. This is Group FM. We are Summer Connecting Cape Town, loving where the show is going this evening. In the building, we got Professor Adam Hout and we are picking his brain. Yeah, you know, I was one of the typical brasa that just go with the flow. Ah, where, what, what, me bruise, get fast, brasa, that type of thing. It's it's a meeting, <laughs> it gets me if you don't make a move or whatever. And that's what my whole world was all about. Until hip hop came along to scope hip hop for me, building my chops. I get wakker geskrik, and we're still on that path, you're not even script more wakker than what we think we've been. And when it comes to, to education, the importance, you know, of uh, being education for me personally, I see that as the, if you want to call it, that, that's the energy, that's the root, that's the foundation of hip-hop as a culture. Not just the music, not just the dance, not just the DJing. Um, if the educational aspects are not in place, ish, man, um, it's going to be a very, very... Um, difficult journey. I think for people who, are, who don't really understand what hip-hop is about, I'm just going to run through the, the elements quickly, the five main elements. The first one and the most fundamental element of hip-hop and the foundation of hip-hop is knowledge and not just knowledge of self but knowledge of the world and what's happening out there. And when I say knowledge, it's education because how do you gain knowledge? Through education. So there we go. And then the others of course is breakdancing, graffiti, emceeing and b-boying which we all know enough. <laughs> it's almost as if the knowledge element is the stepchild because it's the most ignored element in hip hop. When people think hip hop, they think one dimensional. It's either emceeing, it's either breakdancing, it's either b boying or something. But nobody. Um, hip hop is misunderstood these days. It's not seen as the all encompassing anymore. It's so separated. And that's why we have the show this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, over to Professor Adam Hout. Adam, just to pick your brain a little bit more. You know, over the years, there's been park jams, there's been various events taking place, people have been doing various tours around the country, um, movements have been formed, like the African hip hop movement, we're going back 20 years now. Um, um, you know, there, there, there's quite a lot of sort of, if you want to call it, other little organizations being started, and we kind of on this path to make hip hop grow we all have these hopes dreams and aspirations for the culture as well so with regards to i mean these type of things that uh, bring people together in able to be you know to, to, to converse share their ideas go back and forth maybe even debate as well are these platforms important super important i think that's that's the glue i mean think about writer's block writer's block wasn't just about cats getting together and writing rhymes they debated they argued they stretched each other's uh, frames of reference. Think about the bass, your experience with the bass, it wasn't a place to just, you know, rock the beats. It was a place to actually get conscientized in a way. Remember that word, conscientized? <laughs> Conscientization <laughs> programs come yes. at, at school, you know, break from <laughs> teachers and each one teach one. All of that hip-hop was a part of that story, you know. Um, 
some cats were, were writing to Sandili de Kenny as guava juice, you know, mm -hmm. as part of conscientization programs. Others were writing rhymes, you know, were taking inspiration from, from Africa Bombata, from Steve Beaker, a mix of, of black nationalist messages. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that there still are spaces for us to share knowledge for each one to each one. Uh, we're not all of us can afford to go to expensive universities to get degrees. Degrees don't make you educated, we know this. But we need to use those spaces uh, public institutions like the University of Cape Town is available to people and we actually have something called the UCT Summer School and uh, surprise surprise Ready B will be joining yours truly you might not know this, did you get the memo? Uh, I'm like, um, you're saying D and school all in one sentence? <laughs> that, like, um, Ready D will be lecturing at UCT Summer School on hip hop activism. Believe it so, or not. So I'm gonna Why do you go, always look surprised about uh, the things that happens in your life? So let's lecture. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to see my mom tomorrow. Oh, oh she knows. And she's going to tell me where I'm gigging for the next month or two <laughs> if, if there's gigs. Because mom knows everything and she probably knows about this as well and she's going to go, oh, I heard you're going to be by UCT, no, what are you going to do there? And if I'm what are you going to teach I'm, people? Am I teaching? You're teaching hip hop activism. So we're going to look at the very early hip hop and the infants of black, black consciousness. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know. Um, so, um, BC, the hip hop's reception in the country, hip hop activism, debates about activism versus US cultural imperialism. Uh, the old bling. Wait, can you stuff. can you say that a bit slower yeah. for our brothers that so, listen a bit slow out there? What's I, that? Are you saying I spit too fast? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't you're going, you're going all thick nine on us so, here. Um, three lectures <laughs> with Lady D. Three lectures. One on BC, right? Yes. The other one on POC and you know hip hop's entry into the country. Yeah. The third one about cultural imperialism. You know, is hip hop the coke of our life? You ah. Know? Da, 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 right? And in the fourth <laughs> one, a panel discussion specifically about Age of Truth, POC's third album, three of six, no, is it six, seven, six, six. seven, 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 Universal yeah. Soldiers of seven, um, the third album, to, you know, and the only one to get banned, the one that you might say really made life hard for them, so we're going to use that album uh, to talk about censorship in the 90s and the experience and how they got railroaded by everybody from the broadcasters to the music labels to the censorship boards to everybody and we need to compare that to the present moment where we have threats of censorship resurfacing in this country uh, the protection of state information bowl and, and, and the, the possibility that, 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 that almost anything can be classified by a civil servant and that almost anybody including a journalist or academic could be thrown in jail for, 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 for sharing information the opposite of the WikiLeaks uh, uh, scenario, in other words. So the parallels between the stuff prophets were prophesying. Right? <laughs> they were prophesying. You know, don't let it double you, puzzle you. What do they mean by that? Don't trust the National Party. Don't trust this whole negotiation trip. It's a trap. 20 years later, we're going, oh, mm. it's so weird listening to these lyrics. It's so weird looking at these videos because they were kind of right. They kind of were prophets. Uh, and I'm not going to turn them into a hell, Celestia, and, and, and declare them God. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, Please. it's ironic. <laughs> it's ironic. It's super ironic. It's like 20 years later, the parallels are striking. You know, we need to look at that album again. You need to get Lance to re-release that album, in actual fact, out of spite. I'll, I'll, speak, you know, to him. I'll speak to him. Out of spite. Spite all their senses from mm -hmm. that time. And it, it would probably annoy some, some people today. They'd want to, to, to bury it. For the same reasons, ironically, except that they're not yeah. national party people. Oh, that gosh. is weird! <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, we'll definitely dig into that. Um, Professor Adam Haupt, thank you very much for sharing your comments, your always thoughts with us. It's really inspiring as well, and it's always awesome you know, to be able to converse on that level as well, because so many things come up you don't really realize, you know, and then uh, just speaking to, to, to people that that normally don't operate, if you want to call it, in your realm or in your day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of bring alive so many other things within you that you didn't know even exist. You know, so it's really awesome. Thank you very much for that. Thank so we'll be doing our thing next we'll week. We'll be co-lecturing. Yeah. Monday the 27th at 5.30. I'm, I'm more in favor of just sitting there and paying attention to, to you. Oh, I'm, I'm I don't think so. I'm going to jerk you to say that. <laughs> but can I just say this? Uh, if you are online, go to www.summerschool.uct.ac.za. Mm -hmm. Check it out. 